Thank you. So, uh, my name is Kaspar Smednis. I'm support engineer at Zabbix. I'm also working as consultant, as a trainer. And today I want to share with you some tips and tricks how to work with Zabbix in a more efficient way. So, I hope you will find something useful for you also. Okay, let's wait for the people. No problem. And yes, let's start. So I will, be I will begin my presentation with really, really simple things with user macros. Why? Because they will be used in all other slides in a lot of places. And user macros are uh, that uh, functionality that will help you to customize and extend Zabbix. So let's start. Uh, what are user macros? So basically, they are just variable names. Uh, you can store different information, like trigger thresholds, like credentials, and other things. OK. And just to remember, macros has three levels. So you can define the global ones. You can override the macros on template level. And then you can customize them on the host level. So this is really efficient. Uh, usually, you will work with the template macros and then just customize them on the host level. Uh, so let's begin. The problem. Most templates are using uh, fixed thresholds. And there comes the problem. Because some of your systems are more used and some of, of your systems are less used, and you will get a lot of false alerts about the high CPU usage or number of processes or low disk space. So you need to customize them. Of course, you can create different templates uh, for different host groups. But you can do it in a different way. Uh, so yes, here is a typical example. You see a template and fixed, uh, fixed integers. So what you can do? You can use a template macro here, uh, like number of processes, 300, then assign to all the hosts. And you have standard host, some heavily loaded host, and some lightly loaded host. So do like that. You can just change them on host level. And with this, uh, with this trick, you will get rid of the false alarms. So you can just tune your levels as needed. The same template used for all hosts and just customized on the host level. Okay, uh, the same, uh, yes, and here is uh, uh, just explanation for that. Okay, so the real items will look like that. The same thing, template, trigger expression, and just not the integer, but the macro, which will be expanded to the real value. Uh, another example for user macros. So. Uh, most templates used fixed ports, like uh, 22 for SSH, 80 for, 80 for HTTP, and so on. And maybe some of your servers are using different ports. There is no need to create a separate template. Yes, the same mechanism. Uh, define some macro, call it HTTP port or whatever you like. This is just a variable name. And use it, use it in your templates. And then you see, you can adjust this on the host level, and then you can rewrite all your items like that. And then if you have uh, uh, all servers using some common port and just a few servers using some different port, no problem. Create, uh, adjust a host macro on the host level, and the template will still work. OK, let's move. Uh, uh, to another topic, uh, let's move to, uh, uh, to the disk space. So the common problem is we have nice feature. We have low level discovery. So we can discover all disks. And uh, we can create item prototypes. We can create pr uh, trigger prototypes. But the problem is that different point points will have different sizes. And with the same triggers, even using simple user macros, you will end with the situation uh, when, when you will start receiving false alerts. 
because boot is really small. Then you have some medium-sized partition, and maybe you have some terabyte partition for data, and you cannot use the same warning levels. So what to do? Uh, you can use context-based macros. So in the blue, you have some general value for all your hard disk drives. So this is one gigabyte, with, which is a general value. And then you can specify the low-level warnings for your mind points. So you have root, you have boot, you have war, and you have defined the general uh, warning values here. If you will have some additional undefined uh, vo uh, volume, then this blue one will be used. And now on the host level, by default, the same macros are assigned. And then if you need to adjust the var partition, no problem. Just change the macro. If you need to use some additional partition, just imagine you have some data partition which is unique just per this host. So no other host will use this partition or this one point or, or drive. You can just add another macro. It will still work. So this is general, then common for, for, for all hosts, can be adjusted and can be extended if needed. So uh, we are calling them context-based uh, macros. So you can use this. Uh, you can use them with um, moin points. You can use them also with other low-level discovery items. And here is a syntax, yes, so. And yes, of course, this is Linux syntax. You can use Windows drives like CD also, no problem. Okay, uh, one more problem which can be solved with macros. Maybe you are uh, monitoring some Windows server and uh, Zabbix has this nice feature when uh, you can discover the service. But you will discover a lot of services like uh, 60 or something like that. And you need to monitor all, only some services but they are different per server. Maybe there, is, there are some common services on all servers, and maybe there are some different services which are unique uh, for one or two servers. Of course, you can assign on template exchange, you can assign on template RDP, but you can solve this problem in another way. And yes, you cannot use just global regular expression because we have filter but then you will end with like 10 or 20 filters, which is not uh, nice using just global expressions. So what to do? You can create some template uh, which will discover the services and just put none. None means it will discover some service called none which does not exist. So generally it will not discover anything. Assign this, um, Assign this template to the host, and then per host level, you can uh, add services which you need to a macros. And then you can extend this with global regular expressions. Why? Because maybe you have some common services for all servers. So these are unique, and to add the common services which are monitored for all servers, just add like that. So you can use host macro, and you can extend it with the global regular expression. And then it will discover uh, the common services and unique services per host. It is easy, easily to manage. Need to add new service, just go to host, go to macro field, add new value, it will be discovered. Uh, in real life, it looks like that. So here we have, in green, we have host macro with some services with, which can just be extended as needed or removed. Then we have some global expression, which will uh, have some uh, common use services, and you use the OR expression in the filter. So you will always, always discover those ones, and if you need, you can extend with the host. So here we have some explanation. Okay, uh, another common problem. You have a really nice template which is monitoring something like switches. Yes, you have switch power status and health and everything like that, but you have different customers which are using your Zabbix instance. 
and they have different SNMP communities. They are not using the public one. Yes, they have the public one and the secret one. And you want to use the same template. Because the, prob the problem is, uh, you, of course, you can clone the template for each customer. But you will end with a lot of templates. And this is not efficient. Because if you need to change something, you will need to change in 10 places. You can use the same template. I will show how. So you have template and you have the macro. Yes, the most common uh, way. And you have some customers. Well, customer one, customer two. And they are not using the public, which is coming from the template. They have different credentials. So you can create just empty templates for them, just with credentials. And name the templates in the customer names, then assign them to host. Then you see the macros from the templates will uh, replace the template macro. You will use the same template, but you can uh, supply different credentials for each customer. One more suggestion from my side. This is a little unsafe because the same macro is here, the same macro is here. Uh, this macro usually will win because the um, uh, template with a larger ID will win, but for safety, just don't specify credentials here. Specify them only here, yes, and then you are safe. Then we will always use the right credentials for your uh, host. In real life, it will look like that. So just a template, macro section, and you can add as many credentials as you need. SNMP, SSH, keys, doesn't matter. And of course, the uh, permissions work uh, in this design, yes? If some customer does not have access to template, he will not see the credentials of another customer. Okay, so this was introduction into macros. And now we will continue to pre-processing. Uh, why pre-processing? Because this is done uh, before the value storage. So the typical scenario, we have hosts, we are gathering data, and we are storing data to Zabbix database, database. But maybe we need to change the data. We need to multiply, calculate delta, or extract some data, some, uh, extract some information, so we can use data pre-processing for that. And we can use multiple steps of data pre-processing. As Alexei told at the beginning, there is no problem. It works like a pipe. Yes, you can extract from regex, then you can multiply, then you can do some other, uh, some, some other uh, functions and store the result in Zabbix database. So uh, let's start with really, really simple example, which is uh, used for years in Zabbix, but still. So uh, in previous versions in 3.0, this was stored in the item tab. Now it's moved to the pre-processing tab as other pre-processors. So uh, we want to convert bytes to bits or bits to bytes, and uh, we want to store the value in the database. We cannot use just units. Uh, Alexei, uh, in his presentation, will show visualization how we use units, but we want to change the stored data. So we go to pre-processor tab, we add the multiplier, we multiply, and with multiplier eight, we can uh, get bytes from bits. You can divide with that. There is no divide function, but you can use integers which are smaller than one to divide. It's just math. And yes, as I said, this is moved to the new pre-processing tab. Okay, but let's move to more modern examples. So first problem, you need to extract some numerical, numerical data from text. So you are using some Linux memory report or maybe some disk space report, which gives you something like that. Why you use that? Because maybe you cannot use the agent. Maybe you can use just SSA check, yes? And then you will get something like that. And you want to get the numerical values. So what to do? You have this report. You want this free swap space and you can just add two pre-processing steps. First one, with regular expression, will capture the third group, which is here, 
And then, because we are, for some reason, using the free minus I'm in megabytes, but we want bytes, we are just multiplying it. And you will get back the result in the bytes. OK. Another new cool feature of Zabbix. Zabbix has some hard-coded values which can be uh, transformed to decimal. So this is a typical system CTL uh, report which will show which services are enabled and which services are disabled. But you want to use them in trigger functions and you don't want to use text because text is large, use a lot of space, non-efficient. You want to use the integers. So in this case, you can just collect the data. Then first step, you need to extract the information for Zabbix agent in this case. And then you can use function convert boolean to decimal, which has a lot of built-in um, expressions. So true, yes, on, enabled, up will become one, and false, no, off, disabled will become down. There are more of them. You can just look at the documentation. And then you need enabled, disabled. So Zabbix, with this pre-processing step, will look up this table, will find that enabled is one, disabled is zero, and it will replace the result in Zabbix database. So at the end, you will have something like that. So this is a configuration uh, item, which is a memory report dependent items, and then you can see the values, one, zero, one. And one, zero, one, yes, uh, this came uh, from the memory report. Enabled one, disabled zero. And then you can write simple trigger functions like uh, uh, is one or larger than one or something like that. No problems. And, and of course, you can draw graphs from that. OK. So this was introduction to dependent items, and now we will go uh, more deeper in that. So we were, in previous example, we were extracting just the free memory. It worked, no problem. The problem with that is with uh, only the regular items, you will need to make nine SSH calls. Yes, one SSH call for total, for use, for free, and so on. And this is non-efficient because you are making nine SSH calls which use traffic, which use CPU. Why? You can use the functionality which is called uh, dependent items. So you have source data. You have some regular text item which are storing the database and you want to process it. So no problem. Use uh, dependent numerical items write regular expression for each dependent item and store the values in the database. So from one call, you will get one report and this is processed into Zabbix. So data are gathered only one time. Then you store them into database and then there is no need to store this. So you can drop it. You can just uh, put the history period to zero here. So this item is collected. It is pre-processed. The collected values are stored into the database, and this is just dropped to save your uh, precious database space. Uh, so here is example. Here you have the memory report. Here you have example for some dependent item. And here you have the big picture. This one, you see, every minute, don't store the history and just create six items from it. Yes, so, and here you see the latest data. Latest data here is empty, and here you are getting the real values. So you can draw graphs, and so on. Another uh, nice place where to use it is uh, database reports. Because uh, bef uh, before the dependent items, there was a big problem. Of course, you can create 100 ODBC items, no problem. but you will end with uh, a lot of uh, ODBC connections constantly coming from Zabbix to database. Uh, to avoid that, you can, now you can just call one report. In this, in this example, we are calling the slave status, 
we are getting data and we need to monitor our replication. So we need to monitor the most important thing, seconds behind master, then the slave is running, maybe we need some log positions. We just gather this report like that. Then we, uh, uh, then we create an item for that textual. Then we split it into dependent items and then we store it into database. Just one call is made, extract information you need, store to database and drop this one. Really, really efficient. So now we are making just one ODBC call per minute, which is not so uh, much. And here you can see the master item interval every 30 seconds and here are the and here are your metrics, which are stored for 90 days. And here are the actual readings. So no problem. Everything is fine. You can see slave running, and uh, it is not behind master, so everything is fine. And you can define triggers. Yes, you can, you can define trigger, so slave is like one minute behind master. We have problem with replication, yes, or maybe slave is not running. So no problems. Okay, and another new nice functionality. We have added JSON pass and we have added XML X pass to Zabbix so we can pre-process information with them. And just imagine, maybe we want to monitor the local weather with Zabbix. So we can use some weather site like that. And uh, this weather site provides you with information. And this weather site, which is open weather map, I think, uh, just by example, uh, it has some nice API. So what we can do, we can get information from the website. Website will report you uh, with JSON. So you will get a JSON object here in response, JSON data. After that, we have special item, called, uh, special uh, pre-processing step called JSON pass pre-processing. So you can pre-process JSON data you can extract whatever you want, temperature, humidity, wind speed from this JSON and store in Zabbix database. So gather information, get JSON, pre-process JSON, extract information from JSON and store in Zabbix database. This, well, this was possible before the pre-processing. Of course, you can write some curl scripts or things like that, but this is easy and this can be done with the Zabbix web interface. So no custom scripts at all. Uh, how it looks like from Zabbix side. So we have some um, item uh, of type HTTP agent, yes, and this is a new agent, uh, this is a new uh, item type in Zabbix 4.0 because we didn't have this in previous version. So with HTTP agent, you can just specify some key then you specify some URL, which is most important one, and here you use the user macros. So you can build one template, and then you can build a lot of hosts, call them cities, and then provide different user macro values per cities, and no problem. You can monitor the whole Europe or America. Yes? Uh, how it works? So the website reports JSON object, like that, and then, you are using JSON pass syntax here, like uh, body, main, community, which will extract the highlighted data. So you need to specify the pass. It starts with body, then we go to subtree main, and then we go to humidity. If we need to extract like maximum temperature, no problem. Just write another expression, it will, uh, it will find the maximum temperature. Or maybe you want to monitor the wind speed, then you change to body, uh, main and wind speed, like that. Yes? So any of the values can be extracted from the JSON real easy using just the correct JSON pass syntax. And here you, get, here you have the result. So JSON pass for some item, the syntax, and a lot of dependent items. Of course, weather data are collected just one time and all the, uh, just one API call all the data are extracted with Zabbix. Okay, next topic will be low level discovery and this is really important. For me, the golden rule is if you can discover something, discover. 
because it makes things a more more uh, easier. So let's start with SNMP discovery. Uh, Zabbix out of the box has a lot of templates with SNMP discovery. We are discovering network interfaces and things like that. But today I, I want to talk about some custom ones. So in this example, we want to monitor printers. We want to monitor printer supply levels and things like that. And our printers respond with SNMP. So if you will read the documentation for the printers, you will see that uh, they are storing a lot of useful, useful information is in those SNMP trees. Supply levels, capacity, and so on. So what we can do? We can create discovery rule from one of them, like here. Then we can write item prototypes from this rule. And you see, uh, you can use those ones. So you need to uh, index only one of them. So you create rule on this one as an index. And then you create item prototypes. And from this one, you get the index and can monitor the description, capacity, and supply level. Of course, all the trees must use the same indexing, or you will uh, get some strange, uh, some strange results. But this is really efficient. One template, uh, create discovery rule, create item prototype, and then uh, you can assign this template to all your printers. And if, if they are uh, responding to standard, uh, MIB, if, if they are using standard MIB lab library, you can use the same template for all your printers. Okay, next problem. Uh, we need to check remote server status. Yes, so no problem. We have a template or we have an agent. We can create three items and just monitor the server ports. Okay. Then we have another uh, host, which also wants to monitor different hosts. And then we have more hosts. And you see, all the items here are different. So this one are monitoring th those three servers. This one is monitoring those three servers, and so on. And this becomes a problem, because, of course, you can create, uh, and yes, we are using NetTCP port. Of course, we can create a lot of items per host but you will end with a lot of hosts, with a lot of uh, custom items, which is not good, because you will need to create also triggers. You can use templates, but in this situation also, you will end with a lot of templates, because the, second, the next host will use different servers. So we can solve this with low-level discovery. We can write some custom bash script. This script is really simple script. It just uses user macro and returns JSON. Yes, and uh, create a discovery rule for that. Uh, how it works? We are supplying all the hosts and all the ports as user parameters. Then this script is, transferring, is, is transforming them to JSON. And then discovery rule only needs JSON. And from that, you can generate a lot of items dynamically. If you need to add more checks, add them here. If you need to remove some checks, remove from here. So really fast, really efficient. Uh, yes. So next topic. Uh, with Cisco, if you are working with wireless uh, controllers, you, will, you can end with situation when you have wireless controllers, you can access points, and you, to, and you want to monitor all your access points and traffic and users and things like that. But the access points are not returning any information. All information about the sessions connected users are stored here. But you want to separate them. Maybe the access points are used by different customers, and you don't want to give to, uh, and you don't want to, to give the um, unneeded information to, to customers which are not using those access points. So what can you do? You can create discovery rule, and you can create host prototypes from discovery rule. So Zabbix will walk this tree, uh, find all access points. Then you will create a host prototype using IP address as host name and visible um, name as the access point name. Then you uh, will assign template to each host prototype. Uh, and the data will still come from the access point, not from the host. Then, uh, you, of course, you will need to filter out it. 
and you will end with something like that. So you will have a lot of hosts created for each access point, and here you can assign different permissions, no problems. So they are different hosts. All the information is still gathered from the same access point. It is just splitted. You have the full SNMP walk, and you are just splitting it per host, and every host is displaying just a small part of it. And here you, hear exa and here you can see example of one, of one device. So why it's good? Because it is managed by Zabbix LLD mechanism. If you will plug in a new access point, Zabbix will create a new host prototype automatically. Remove it, it will be removed. You can assign templates automatically. You can generate uh, host names from macros. And yes, you can use permissions to restrict access. Okay, and a few last topics about event correlation. So, uh, we had one customer and he has had problems. He wanted to monitor switches and he wanted to monitor uh, end devices connected to the switches. And then you know the problem. When the switch goes down, for Zabbix, all the end devices also goes down. So you will receive like 50 alerts. And um, you don't want so much alerts. Yes, you want to receive alerts only about the source problem. You can use trigger dependencies, but you must link each device to each switch, create dependency, and maybe the devices are moving between switches, and then you must recreate the dependencies. So this becomes a problem. Uh, how to solve it? Uh, it seems this looks not so nice here. Okay. So what we have here, uh, we have a switch IP, which is host IP. This is Zabbix internal macro. And we have device type switch. So those are assigned to switch triggers. And then here, yes, um, sorry for that, but uh, uh, for each device which are connected here, we are just tagging the device with the, same, with the switch IP where it is connected. How we do it? We have API script. Um, we have API script which will look up the art table and then it will um, just uh, map IP to Mac. But at the end, we can find the switch IP for each connected device. We can use it in the tag, and then no problem. We will add another switch. We will connect. We will move agents uh, between the switches. We just need to to, ch uh, to, to uh, change the tag, which can be done with API script, and which is more and more easier than to change the dependency. Of course, dependencies still can be used between switches, no problem. Yes, you have your switch uh, hierarchy, and you can use your dependencies. But for other, you can use event correlation, like that. Yes, uh, you, you are making some rule, old, even, old event, uh, matches the new event, and if the old event was with tag switch, if the new event was, was with tag device, and if the switch IP matches, then close the new uh, alert. Just be careful with that because those are global event correlation rules, so double check before you create something like that, because this is global, per instance, so you can do something bad. Just be sure that all the rules are correct and tags are correct. But this works. All the uh, events coming from the end devices are suppressed if the, if the switch comes down. And the last topic today from me is about um, um, some funny um, thing in the Zabbix scheduler. So, the normal situation, you want to postpone alerts for 30 minutes, yes? Problem happens, you don't want to get the SMS immediately. Maybe you want to get the SMS after uh, 30 minutes. A lot of people, and Zabbix scheduler starts with the, with the immediate step. So a lot of people are using some first fake step, which is doing nothing, echo to dev null or something like that. So it looks like that you have operation steps, first step, does nothing for 30 minutes, and then you have your nice schedule. So you can get rid of the first step, no problem. You can use the default interval. So default interval is one hour. So what you can do? You can change the default interval to 30 minutes, 
then here will be default. Default, don't do nothing, immediately default. This will happen after 30 minutes. This will happen after one hour and so on. And then there is no reason to keep the first step. It is possible in the Zabbix to start the scheduler from second step. The first step, it will be just some imaginary step and this looks more clear and nice. Yes, and this is, uh, this is a real example, so you can see. You can see the default interval, you can see the schedule, and you can see second step, and it will start after 30 minutes, which actually is the first step, of course. So that was all from me today. I'm out of time. So any questions from you? Yeah, thank you, Kasper. We can have one or two quick questions. From the, uh, from yeah. the community? Yeah. Okay, hello. Uh, hi, Gasper. So uh, we have a few questions, and one is uh, quite interesting. Do you have some tips of uh, troubleshooting the pre-processing issues? Uh, how we can troubleshoot uh, why some big JSON file cannot be parsed? Mm, I have a lot of tips, yes, but uh, I cannot cover this topic in one minute, yes, so uh, I, don't, I must know what is the problem and uh, maybe is a, uh, is a JSON file correct? Is it, if it has right syntax, then I must look at the file, I must look at the, at the path and then we can find it, but it cannot be solved in like one minute uh, here. I believe you will uh, talk about it tomorrow uh, during your... Yes, uh, I forget to say, tomorrow at 9 o'clock we will have pre-processing uh, lab or uh, how it's called? Workshop. Workshop, yes, sorry. We will have pre-processing workshop, so if you want to um, learn more about the pre-processing, you can come tomorrow at 9 o'clock. I will show you some more interesting things. Awesome. And uh, the la last one from the community. Uh, can dependent items be combined with uh, some form of low-level discovery? For example, when you, uh, when you count something? Yes, I had no time to show this on slides today, yes. But uh, the idea here is the following. In Zabbix 4.0, you can use dependent items as item prototypes, and you can use some regular item as a master item which opens a lot of possibilities to you. You will have a regular item, then you need to create one discovery rule, and from this discovery rule you can create uh, dependent item prototypes, which will change dynamically based on regular item. And with that, a lot of things can be achieved. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kasper. I believe there are more questions, but we are strictly on time today, and I think you can ask the questions during the lunch break. Thank you once again, Kasper.